Hi, this is Chris Young from ATMakers.org. On April the 14th, Bill Benko and I made a presentation at the Indiana Patents 2022 Tech Expo. Unfortunately, some of the audio on my part of the presentation came out a little bit weak, so I've taken the opportunity to add some open captions to that part of the video. Bill's voice comes through nice and clear, and if you do need captions for his part, the automatically generated captions on YouTube are to work pretty well. So here's the presentation that we made. I hope you enjoy it and find it informative. <laughs> if you told my younger uh, colleague, the, the colleagues I had when I was in my 20s, that I would be running a charity, and everybody would think I was this really nice guy, they would laugh me out of the room. Okay? <laughs> I was brutal, I was really effective, but I didn't care who I ran over. Um, so occasionally it comes out. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so I am Bill Binko uh, from AT Makers. Uh, some of you may know me. I think some of the people who came in late know me. Um, I am. I do have just uh, this financial and non-financial disclosures to make. I am the co-founder of Lesson Tricks with my delightful wife Lori, who's in the back of the room in front of the camera. Um, and uh, I also founded. So, so that is a I'm without a salary, and I'm an ownership share there. So that's. So you should know about me. It's also how I got into this is Lesson Fix put me in AT conferences. And as an engineer, uh, I started seeing that things were a little bit messed up on the technology side of AT. Uh, things seemed radically uh, overpriced. Things seemed, things, things seemed very difficult to get. And the engineer in me got frustrated and angry and started this. <coughs> and so I also have a, um, I am the founder of AT Makers Inc., which is a nonprofit charity, 501c3. 501c3 charity, and um, I work as a mentor for first robotics teams. Who here's got a kid in first robotics? Some of you have to. So I don't have a kid, but we have two teams. You have two teams. Cool. So first robotics is a great program if you do have uh, teens or even even younger kids. It's really great for them to get, to get them into it. One of the great things about them is they focus on outreach. As their their their, their best awards are all based on the outreach your group does which is really handy when I need a bunch of technically minded kids. Um, I also found it, this was in here because I reused the slide, I'm sorry. Um, but I did find, found um, COVID speak with uh, Brian Whitmer. Come on in, I'm, I'm good with it. Um, in 2020, yeah, there's seats up here in the front that aren't reserved. They're all good. Um, Brian Whitmer from Cough Drop. Can you the Cough Drop? So Brian Whitmer and I found it a, a tool called COVID speak, which is basically an e-tran board for a remote use. So you're looking at a screen and wherever you look, the person on the other side can see, but if you're remote and you're um, intubated or something like that, you can talk to somebody who's not allowed in the room with you. Um, it was a really good idea. It kind of took off and then COVID ended, thankfully. And we didn't have nearly as many people on, on um, uh, ventilators. So those are my disclosures. Uh, Chris, um, do you want me to do yours? Yeah. There. I don't have any. No, no money involved. No money involved. <laughs> <laughs> That's more, more true than we'd like, actually. I know. This particular from my wheelchair that said the driver of this vehicle carries no cash. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris is an active contributor to AT Makers. He is both a uh, recipient of some of the devices that we make, as, all, as well as the designer of probably more devices uh, than anybody's made, with the possible exception of me. Probably. Right. So Chris has designed them. Uh, when we say Chris has made all of his own devices, he has done everything but solder and assemble. So everything you see that he's going to talk about, uh, he, three, he designed the 3D printed parts, he designed the boards, he did the circuits, he's done them all. Right, wrote the code, debugged the code, debugged the rest of our code, yeah. and um, he had me come out quarterly with a pile of things. <coughs> that was yesterday. Yeah. So, um, so that's who, who Chris is. He does not have any financial re uh, relationships relevant to this. Okay. Um, a lot of you did say you didn't know what AT Makers was, which is kind of good because I could become a little bit fresh. But if you have seen AT Makers before, you've probably seen us at like Adaptathon or the ATIA Maker Day, where there are these big events 
where it looks like this. We've got a whole ton of kids, and we're going to make 200 adapted toys. Right? We're going to adapt 200 toys. Or we're going to do something at the Maker Day where we teach a whole bunch of speech pathologists and OTs how to solder. We do that. We do those events. In fact, there's a good picture on, on this one. Uh, that's actually Bill James, uh, who's an OT, and a bunch of high school kids teaching OTs and speech pets how to solder. You might know some of the people in that picture um, if you go to ATIA a lot. Um, so we do that, but that really isn't our goal. Our goal is we want to bring together the AT users who desperately need better technology solutions and the makers who can make them for them. Okay? So this picture is probably the best example uh, of what our goal is. And this is here at EBM. This is in Elkhart. Um, this is in Mishawaka. Yes. Mishawaka. 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 Uh, Penn High School, Penn Robotics, and Mishawaka. Anybody from up there in here? I'm from Elkhart. Oh, you're from Elkhart. Right. So, do, you, do you know the Hunts, Ella Hunt? Yes. Okay, so this is Ella Hunt. Yep. There you go. So Ella Hunt has SMA type 1, um, and at this point, about four years ago, we had made, I had made a device that allowed her to control her power chair with just two switches. And there's a long story behind that. The more important thing here is what the teens are doing. So this, this is shot in the practice room of the Penn High School Robotics um, Facility, which is the old gym which is this enormous room that they have turned into a robotics complex. It's millions of dollars of space. It's nuts, okay? And they've got this enormous floor where they can lay out their, their robotics team. What she, what's happening here is that Ella is, has been offered to use their space to practice. So they've set up cones, they've set up um, various things for her to do. The woman in the blue shirt is her physical therapist. The woman in the, in the far right is Erica Hunt, her mom. And they're thrilled because Ella is able to drive this device. The person in the chair is obviously Ella. We all know what she's getting out of this. But the other three people here are much more interesting to my charity. Okay? So in the very back, you'll see two kids. These are high school kids who, um, you'll notice, have their phones out, which is not shocking. But they have their phones out. And what's happening is they are recording what's happening so that they can win the Chairman's Award. And they do win the Chairman's Award this year. Chairman's Award is the highest award in FIRST Robotics. It's what you do off the court and in your community. And they're able to talk about all the things they've done for Ella. They've made the troughs that are holding her arm in place. They built a ramp for her at her house. They've done all these things for her. They're kind of her pit crew, right? And everybody kind of needs a pit crew. Chris, you need a pit crew. Yeah, I am. Yeah, so <laughs> he needs a local pit crew. Yeah. So, so um, this has to keep flying out from Florida. Um, they, they're recording this and they're, they're doing that to help themselves. But the person here is Italian Fields. This is my favorite picture, by the way. I talk about it a lot. So she's playing tag with a girl with SMA type 1. How great is this, right? She is looking through a BiPAP mask, a feeding tube, the harness that's holding her in place that is actually disconnected at this point, mistakenly. The, 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 all of this crap around this child, seeing through it, laughing and playing tag, right? She's going to be a better human, right? If she's 17 years old, and this experience is going to change the way that she sees everybody in her life with a disability, right? So my job is to bring these people together, because that's what happens when we bring them together. Follow? Now, everybody thinks AT Makers is awesome, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that we do. And today, you'll notice that the, the, the um, title of today wasn't AT Makers is awesome. It was about creating a custom AT solutions, right? And a lot of people have made relatively low-tech AT solutions. Right? How many of you have made your own switches? Some of you have made your own switches, your own mounts. I'm sure you've made your own mounts to hold switches. Um, we're talking about kind of the next level of I need something that can't be done out of the box. It can't be done with the things that are in the AT shelf. There's no switch here that Ella can use. There's no switch here that Chris can use. I've got to make something from scratch. I don't know how. And more importantly, I, I might, I don't want to say I'm going to give up because almost none of you will give up, but you'll be incredibly frustrated by the fact that you can't, you can see this person's intention, their intent, and you can't get it into the, the things you're trying to control. That's what today's about, okay? I'm going to give you some examples. Chris is going to walk you through a lifetime of examples. And then we're going to talk about how you can work with us when you're in this situation. Okay? All right. I'm going to save questions for the end, but I will also tell you 
he's really wordy. I mean, he's obscenely wordy. If you've ever read his blog, you'll know why. We're going to run out of time before the question, so feel free to stay afterwards for questions. <laughs> and, and it's not my fault. Okay. All right. So this gentleman here, and by the way, every single device I'm going to show you here, we have at the table out there. And I don't mind staying a little late if you want to see anything in particular. Feel free. If you haven't been by, we're right next to the lesson picks booth. By the way, I mentioned lesson picks, right? That's kind of how this is funded. So buy lesson picks. So I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, this I can do that here. It's Tech Expo. I can do that here, right? All right. So, and I had a whole disclaimer. So this gentleman here is Jim Lubin. Jim Lubin had a uh, C3 spinal cord injury. Uh, he had um, transverse myelitis, an infection in your spinal cord. And in 1994, he lost all ability to move. In 1996, he'll tell you the story that he realized nobody had any expectations of him. And that if he was gonna do anything, he had to do it himself. So he taught himself Morse code. And a device, they had a device back then called an easy switch. It's from the Neil Squire Society that took Morse code and turned it into typing on your computer. And he still used it last year. The same 1996 device. Every time it died, it lost all of his set of customizations and he had to pull out, he had to pull out the old desktop, put it on floppy to reprogram this thing every time it lost power. So he reached out to us and said, uh, help right <laughs> so we made a little device and it's over there it is a $20 uh, microcontroller and this neat little sensor right here that Adafruit the company I'll, you'll hear me talk about quite a bit um, made for us uh, they designed it specifically with this in mind um, total cost is about $30 the programming took a lot of hours I never count hours programming when I talk about the cost of things mainly because it's only cost it only counts once once you've written the software once, because we're open source, we can make as many of these as we want and we're not reproducing that time, okay? But this one took a long time to program. Uh, by the way, the QR codes, if you want to snap pictures of these, there's whole videos on every one of these stories, okay? And these will be shared if they haven't been already. Um, so, so we were able to get him this thing. He, he now still has the old one, which he still uses for a couple of things because there are some modifications I'm supposed to be making for him, but he doesn't have to, and if it dies, and it can, He's got one that works perfectly, except for dragging a mouse, which I have to fix. But um, he's got the ability to communicate with Morse code on a sip and puff without having to keep a 1996 device open. I don't know why the mouse is working. This is Kylie Kramlich. She lives in, in Atlanta. You might know her mom, Christine Kramlich. She's the PRC rep. So if you've ever used the PRC anything, you might know better. She had a really simple request. She's 16 years old. How many of you have daughters? I have three daughters, so shutting your door is a big deal. Um, <laughs> slamming your door is a big deal, but she didn't want to slam it. She told us she didn't want to slam it. She wanted to shut her bedroom door. She wanted to keep the cat out. She wanted to be able to invite people in and have privacy when she needed it. And door openers are hundreds and thousands of dollars. But robotics teams have everything necessary to open and close a door. So every part here comes out of the robotics kit. There's a little uh, motor on the right-hand side with a skateboard wheel that sits on the on the ground. It's not, there are no holes in the door because we couldn't do that in this setting. So it's held on with command strips. So like, yeah. this totally works. We put it on her, her Wi-Fi um, uh, her Wi-Fi network and her powered, her um, eye gaze device, her PRC Accent, now has a bunch of new buttons like open door, closed door, lock door. It's not really locked door, it just means the cat can't get in. Because <laughs> from a safety perspective, you have to be able to open the door. Um, but you'll know that you're pushing through the dragging thing, right? Um, and she's thrilled. And again, this is something that you're not going to find this in the AT catalog. There's no demand for it. You can't get it funded. There's, there's no way. But you give this to a robotics team, this is a great challenge for a robotics team. And now that it's been done once, we can do it as many times as we need to. Okay? Total parts, probably about $75 to do that. So um, this one might, some people might, we, so anybody on the far left, let me start with his mom, who's with us here, has healthcare voter tattooed on her hand, okay? She's as far left as you can get, and she brought her son to the gun range. So you might have met Michael Phillips. He gave a keynote repeatedly at um, ATIA and at FAST and a bunch of other places. He has SMA type 1. He's 37 when this was um, shot, 
and Chuck when this was filmed. Um, he was not shot. Um, and he passed away during COVID, but not from COVID at age 38. Um, and I'm thrilled we were able to get this done for him. He had a bucket list and it said things like spend, an, uh, eat, spend it all night on an island with a woman that I love. And I'm like, okay, I can't help you. And the next one he said, fire a gun with a switch. And I'm like, I, you're Huckleberry, I'm totally your right. I can totally do this, okay, I can do this. And so we went, and, and a lot of people were like, this is not safe. This was the safest project we've ever done, okay? We had the ATF approve it. We had to go through all the right channels. We had you know, officers on the range. They cleared, they closed the gun range for us. There was no way to get hurt here. Um, and this guy got to, to fire a gun. And that is a very real quote. I found out later that he had pre-programmed, and it, it didn't have the, it didn't have the leap making there. It actually said, you know, I, this is a First thing I did. And I don't mind quoting him because, right, right, of course it was, right? He's been waiting three years to do this. Uh, we learned something really important from this one. Uh, one that I, we, we, you all should remember this one. The last thing, and then Chris, you can, I've never, never mentioned this to you, but the last thing I think anybody wants to give up at this point is access to the internet. Yeah. Is that about right? Yeah. So as, as, as people's abilities um, decay, they always want the internet because it's their lifeline. It's where their community is. Um, and so when we started talking about how we were gonna let Mike fire a gun, the answer was, well, can we just web enable a gun? Because if we can web enable a gun and he can control the web, we got this. So we did. So we made a web interface that is on an internal network. It's not on the internet. It was on a Wi-Fi network connected to my phone. Um, I got all these little caveats, but I promise this was safe. Um, we gave him a camera that looked right down the barrel, right? Uh, we tinted it green, so it looked like a scope, but it wasn't really green. We tinted it green, um, and he had to um, arm, the, arm it by hitting the, the green symbol there and then fire it with the trigger. And he, I bet he fired 40 rounds. I got all the videos. Okay. And of all the videos I've made, this is the one that inspired me the most. Like, lots of these things are inspiring, but um, we had... The, his mom pulled up in a white minivan at the gun range that said F Trump at the gun range, okay? <laughs> and the gun range people were, so she walked in, everybody got along. It was so great. Everybody understood that none of this other crap matters. This guy wants to shoot a gun. And his mom didn't want him to, it didn't matter. The gun range probably was like, I don't really want to close down for a Saturday afternoon for this, but I, we're going to. We're gonna do this. And it made me feel so much better. We talked about it at the end of this, and he talks about why somebody that far to the left would want to shoot a gun. It's worth watching, okay? You're not going to find this in the AT catalog. I promise <laughs> There is not a gun firing mechanism in the AT catalog. But sometimes it's on the bucket list, right? And you just make it, you just do it. So that's that's probably one of my favorite ones, okay? Um, probably right, you should have sorry. He did shoot zombies, so he asked us to put up the paper zombies because they make zombie, um, they make zombie targets, and he wanted to sever the head. So I had to keep, I had to keep moving the gun so that he could shoot all the way across the neck, and he did. He, he eventually was was happy enough that he was that he was done, right? So it's a great video. Um, normally, when I'm giving a talk like this, I go to my next slide, which is this one, but. He's local, right? So I didn't have to bring, I don't have to go through this. I brought Chris with me. Um, and uh, you're gonna talk about, I think, all these things. Yeah. So I'm not going to do anything other than to say, so Chris is one of our uh, contributors, one of the founders, really. Um, you got me into Adafruit. This thing wouldn't yeah. be going without without you there. Yeah. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him kind of tell his story. He is here in um, the just north of Speedway area. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, let me slide you up with this one, and uh, you guys can hear Chris? Testing, testing. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about my lifetime of creating my own assistive technology. So it was turning out that I was born in 1950 with spinal muscular atrophy, and they didn't call me that in those days. They didn't know what I had. They didn't think I was going to live very and I'll be 67 in July. So that tells me 
they didn't know what they were even talking about. <laughs> still don't. Yeah, they still don't. So I didn't get my first wheelchair until I was five. All right, my parents would carry me around or sit me in a high chair or whatever. But down the lower left corner, that's my first wheelchair. Mm -hmm. The next picture is on my eighth birthday. That's the same wheelchair modified. I outgrew it. So we ripped out this seat. My mom made a, a new seat that was brighter. My dad modified the frame. And I got a, a brand new wheelchair without having to, to buy a wheelchair. He also made that black tray for me. A rather faded picture next to that. That's at the uh, Crudrick Lake in Brown County, where we had a cabin. And that's my next wheelchair. It was just, again, there was no physical therapist evaluation. They just walked into Baker Brothers Medical Supply and bought a wheelchair. And so my mom had to make custom cushions. My dad had to adjust the footrest. We made all sorts of modifications ourselves. Um, it looks like I'm holding that vision, but actually it's mounted on a bracket on my armrest. Um, when I was 10 years old, I got my first power chair, and that's me and my sister Carol. I'm probably 14 or 15 in that picture, but I got the chair when I was 10. It wasn't my chair, it belonged to the school. Now back in the 1960s, there were only two special ed schools in the entire state of Indiana. One was James E. Roberts School, IPS 97, and one was the school up in Cary. And IPS didn't provide wheelchairs. The PTA would have been fundraisers to buy wheelchairs. And that power chair was donated to the school by the widow of a man who had it a few months and passed, passed away. So I was allowed to use the power chair as long as my parents would maintain it, uh, repair it, and keep it working. When I graduated high school, I had to give it back. So I got another power chair to my dad's insurance. We'll go to the next, next slide. This is a, a fun item. We built a, a motorized floating lawn chair. So <laughs> we got a regular floating chair, lowered the seat so it was more stable, uh, put a safety belt in it so I wouldn't throw down in it. And then we had electric fishing motor and a, a wire cage around the belt so it didn't jump on my, my toes. <laughs> and I could throw it around Gordon Lane in a power floating chair. Not yet. Um, all through grade school, high school, all the way through college, I had some use of my hands. I could never dress myself. I could never go to the bathroom without help. But I could feed myself. I could handle books and papers and uh, eventually learn to type an electric typewriter in high school, which was great when I got into computers later on. I went to IUPUI and got a BS degree in the computer science, and then I went to work as a computer programmer uh, in a genetics research lab. And I worked there for two years until I got not, uh, digestive heart failure. I had to quit. And so I had to, uh, I started my own work from home computer consulting company. I did that for about five years, but it never really made much money. It was hard to do work from home before the internet. So that was a problem. Next slide. As I, my disability got worse, I couldn't type on the keyboard anymore. So we would talk the keyboard up on a stand. And I was okay with the tech. Well, then, how do you hold down control for shift when you're typing with the tick? So we brought these little switches for radar jack and wired it into the shift control buttons. And I would push the, the switches 
um, to the tank. So then I needed to do work TV remote. So we were the same buttons into the TV remote. And my dad got really good at soldering wires in very tiny places. Uh, now it's one thing to take apart a ten dollar TV remote and solder wires into it. But I live near Speedway and I'm a race fan, so they had an electronic stopwatch in Speedway. Gift shop, seventy five dollars. I had to have it. Back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brought it on, cracked it open, soldered wires into it. Risk turning it into to a seventy-five dollar paperweight, you know, mm -hmm. and we did so well. We got it. A year later, we switched, adapted a seven hundred dollar camcorder, and that was for the artist purpose. But it worked, and it was it was worked. Next slide. This is my friend Christopher Lee, and he had very severe cerebral palsy, and so much so that he would keep us hands and feet strapped down to his wheelchair because his spasms were so bad. And so he couldn't push a button, he couldn't use the head switch, he really couldn't do anything. He finally figured out he could make a clicking sound with his tongue, like, like that. So a friend of his, who was an electrical engineering student, built a circuit that would recognize that Quick sound, and this is what Bill and I call digitized, digitized intent, and it's a way to get information out of the person. So he used it at first to control a tape recorder, so he could dictate, and then someone else would transcribe his dictation. But I said, wait a minute, now how would you like to type on a computer? So I wrote some songs. They allowed him to look into the computer and do that. Like anything you would do with a keyboard, he could do like the thing this time. And uh, there was a, a national conference, a national contest called the First Day National Search for Personal Computer Applications for the Handicapped. And uh, it was uh, 900 entries from around the country. And I went to, to Chicago to exhibit, and I was awarded seventh place in the Chicago region, and uh, one of the top 100 designs. Next slide. The next challenge for me was in 2015. I got to the point where I couldn't push my joystick uh, with my hand, hand in. and this was the first time. I had any encounter with an AT professional. I called up my local DME and said I need a new wheelchair. Well, the problem was you didn't have any demo units. You didn't have anything for me to try out. You should have catalogs, but I, I couldn't try it out. So we would wait, wait months and months to try to get a demo from the man manufacturer. And then it would, wouldn't work. And then we wait more months to get the next device, and it didn't work. We finally found this one that works. That young lady there is controlling the chin with her chin. And the only problem with that is I've got a fat neck, and it would fit around my neck. The guy says, Don't worry, when I order it, we'll get you a bigger one. So then I st still had three months for the people to go through to get the, the chair. A year after we started, they finally delivered a chair. The guy says, oh, I couldn't get you a bigger collar. I brought you this other kind of vitro that I never used. It didn't work. So I used my 3D printer to try to adapt it. It still, still didn't work. I said, forget that, we'll build that rock. My dad went out in the garage, got a piece of metal, bent around it. I 3D printed it and everything. And we finally, a month after I got my wheelchair, I could finally 
drive it. And uh, that's the system I'm using now. Is I just push the control, control with my mouth. And it can dry that way. It's nice because um, as I evolved the design over the years, made it more adapt, more adjust, adjust made it stronger. Because the first I broke and uh, did, did it all myself. Because the, the off-the-shelf stuff just didn't work. Next slide. Just before we go on, yeah. um, I 3D printed it as a misnomer. You modeled it in Fusion 360 or, yes. or Design 123. You started from scratch, designed yes. every piece of it, put them together, and tested them all. And this everything here that is plastic is something that he designed himself. And is that a simple form? Yeah. It's infinitely better than what they were offering. Yes. Okay. okay. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. <laughs> Did you sell it to the wheelchair company? <laughs> <laughs> it's all open source. We might talk about open source and what that means. It means anybody can replicate it for free, including the real wheelchair companies who are allowed to sell it. Okay. My biggest accomplishment is the ultimate remote. And I operated with three buttons uh, that I hold in my right hand. We call it a, a sling ring uh, after the device that uh, doctors strange <laughs> in the proper comics as a, a ring called a sling ring. So that's that's where we got the name. This. Yeah. So with three three buttons, I could control <laughs> TV, camera box, DVD or Blu-ray, move the, the mouse on my computer, type on my computer, and do Bluetooth, iOS switch control for my I, iPhone or iPad. And then from that, I could turn lights off and on set my thermos dad and even as a, a call, call buzzer so I can call for him help in the middle of the night. So my whole life I've had to evolve and adapt to my changing disability. And I'm getting to the point where pushing those buttons is going to be even more difficult. So what I'm working on now is a device that hangs off of my glasses and it's a uh, proximity sensor so I can twitch my cheek like that or like that and it will tr trigger the switch. And so anything you can do with an A2 switch, I can do by twitching my cheeks. So that's a work in progress. So uh, <coughs> that's about it. That's it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> So um, we have we have some versions of everything Chris is talking about either here or over at the booth. Um, the, the big thing to, for us to take away, and the reason that you guys kind of came in as an original one, is this. And Chris mentioned it early on. Right? The, the key to every one of our success stories is we digitize the user's intent. And I know there's people here who are like I don't understand what you mean. Right? I mean, if you can take whatever motion the, the, the end user has that you can detect, like. I can feel her pressing on my finger, or I can hear the sound that he's making, or I can see that, that there's a change here on their cheek. Is there any way I can capture that? If you can capture that and get it into a chip, okay, like one of these, right? These things that I don't mind throwing out because they're $10, okay? So if I can get the light sensor here to detect, just like you was talking about blinking, this is a change, it's a, it's a proximity sensor. If you can, I can take that and get it into this chip. Everything else is easy. Okay, so there's a picture here. All right, so step one, we captured the physical action. This is hard. Okay, this is really hard because every person is going to be different. It's going to be okay. We're going to go through six different sensors in order for us to be able to get that out. But we will eventually get that out. Everything on the right, like here. So everything in green solved problems okay there is a geek somewhere who knows how to send a text message from within one of these chips and there's there's somebody who knows how to control a motor to turn the to turn the motor on the door to open and close the door 
right? All of the output, all of the activations, the things that you want to be able to do, the output is solved. Switch control exists. In order to control switch control, you need to hook up a Bluetooth keyboard. We can turn anything into a Bluetooth keyboard, okay? That's solved. The hard part is this part. It's on the left. It's get the information out of the user, get the intent, right? Digitize their intent. And once it's in software, Chris can fix it, right? You can fix it. Do anything. Make it do anything. Okay. <laughs> and this isn't Bill can do it. This is any of the hundreds of people on the AT Makers group, right? All of your kids in the robotics group want to learn. They want to fly their rotocopter up to upside down, right? But much more, much more, more, much simpler thing to do is take this device and turn it into a switch control device, or uh, assistive touch, right? Switch a mouse control on an iOS device, or just a mouse. So. This is what we do in every case. Now, one of the reasons I, I and I'm not gonna to talk through this whole thing, there's a, this is a really good one to watch if you wanna feel better about the world, okay? About six months ago, five yeah. months ago? Yeah. Six months ago, the little girl that we talked about, Ella Hunt, um, in, in, in Elkhart, um, went in to have spinal fusion surgery. So this is a optional, but common surgery for SMA. Yes. You considered it. Yeah. Well. Back of the day, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know you needed it. Okay, so this, this basically fuses the spine so that the scoliosis and the, you can hold yourself up in the, in the yeah. seat better. Yeah. They went in to do this for Ella, um, and everything went wrong. Everything that could go wrong in a spinal surgery went wrong. She had a massive bleed, she lost seven liters of blood, which is oh, like no, all that you have. Okay. Okay. And they replaced seven liters of blood. She had a hypoxic event and she lost the ability to feel from here down. So while she couldn't move before, now she couldn't feel. And the two switches she had, she couldn't move. So she lost the, the one thing we were able to capture from her. So, um, I don't know if I can put the mix in. So I went, I, I reached out to the AT Makers community and said, I need ideas. Give me ideas. What are we gonna, what are the possible ways we can get it out? We talked about blink switches, we talked about um, sound switches, like one that Chris yeah. used, not this Chris, the other Chris used. Um, and so we went up there, the woman here, and some of you might know her, uh, Judy Schoenler? No? All right, so, so OT, um, very big in Twitter on, on oh, like, Judy. yeah. Yeah, sorry. Like Judy. <laughs> so um, she came down from Michigan and met me. And it's something that is actually kind of eye-opening for me because I don't, I don't leverage OTs enough uh, in what we're doing. We need to do more partnerships because she was able to steer me away from things that were gonna be long-term uh, issues. Um, and find things in positioning that was far better than I would have done. Um, and I, I kind of knew that, but I, didn't, I hadn't done it. I don't, I don't call it an emergency. It kind of felt like an emergency. This kid desperately needed a win, right? She had lost way too much in the last couple of weeks. So we went to her house, and uh, this is a video. Um, and this, this is one of, we found two ways to digitize her intent. This is one of them. Uh, here, I don't think we have audio, it doesn't matter. Um, so if you look very carefully at her finger, it just barely moves, okay? And we were able to show her on that strain gauge. Strain gauge is the sensor that you guys don't have, but geeks do. You can see every, every time she'd press, there was a dip. I don't know if you can see that on this screen. Yep. Kind of hard to. Um, but there's her going up and down and up and down and up and down, right? So we were able to get off of this sensor just enough it could tell that she was trying to press. We'd give her a way to practice, okay? And then, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, this is a video of me in bed with Ella. Um, <laughs> so this is a sensor, I actually have one, uh, what's this sensor? The same grip sensor that Chris uses when he's blinking, but for her, it's on her cheek. And when she moves her cheek, you'll see it here. That's me talking geek stuff here. Yeah. I'm sorry. So you'll see her move her cheek right there. And when she gives a good, nice, big smile, right there, that's how much you can move. And you can see it on the graph, right? See right here? See this little thing right here? So if we can detect that, then we can give it to Chris, we can give it to me. And we can say, okay, we need to make a switch that detects that. 
That's what we're going for. When that happens, we want it to trigger the switch. And then we want to give some feedback. So we gave an audible relay that clicked. And so she could feel and hear when it went click, 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 and she could practice. But I do, I hope this video does work. So this one, no, so that's, this was the night after that, I drove down from Elkhart here and Chris and I at his house, got it so that the, the chart looked like that when he moved. He's also a really good guinea pig. Okay. <laughs> really patient yeah. guinea pig. Most patient SMA patient in the world, right? Yeah. Um, this one, I'm going to turn on the audio. I might move my thing here. So, let's see. Oh. So, this is the second switch, which we have on a tray. And Chris Young and I made the event meet colder. Does it work? Can you control it really well? Look at that. And even if you're in a thing, you hardly move, but it works, right? Uh -huh. It's a little bit when you move back on. How's that? Is it better? Uh-huh. Alright, so that goes into a little microphone over there. It comes out and goes into the iPad. And now check it out. So you like a pro with your iPad again. What do you find it? Uh-huh. You find it? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, right? Uh-huh. Alright. You'll hear her grunt and frustration in a second. Judy was with me doing the measurement, right? We can do that. So sometimes you gotta do that, right? You gotta just go show up and do it. So yeah, that's, that's what we wanna do. So when you get to the point with a, a person and you're stuck, you can feel it. You can feel the fact that this person is moving their finger. You can see the fact that they're blinking on time, right? You don't know how to get it out of them. We should call us. Call us. Right? Go to the AT Makers Facebook page, or the cards that I didn't bring, uh, that are over in the other room. Yeah. Um, we. This is what we do. And so, the how can you do this? Too should be your question now, right? And so, first, well, let's start with this. If there's a commercial product, use it, even if it's overpriced. Okay. It's obscenely overpriced. There are only a few that are obscenely overpriced. You can all complain about it with me. Right? NeuroNode is obscenely overpriced. Okay? There's a few, $17,000 switches that are not okay. There's always a reason. In the case of NeuroNode, it's because they got a, a VA contract for that and they're not allowed to sell it for less. So, but if there is a commercial product, we're not trying to be a cheaper version of these things. But when there's not, right? When there's not, don't assume there's no way to get this kid's antenna out. There is. In the other world, the non-AT world, there's a place called DigiKey, which has 200,000 sensors, and a million sensors. Maybe. Yeah, so we have every sensor known to man, and they're all like six cents. <laughs> like, like these things. This thing here, this sensor is $5 with the board. The sensor on it is about six cents, right? These are, these are commodity things in the electronics world. We can make them AT. Okay, we bring them there. Focus on the tent of the end user and don't give up. I know you're not giving up in your hearts, but don't actually stop. 
Like sometimes they're like, I just can't figure it out. And you hit a dead end. When you hit a dead end, reach out to somebody like us. Honestly, you can probably go to your robotics class, your robotics um, organizations, and they'll get you there. They'll just be starting from scratch. And if you go to us, we can guide them so that they're not starting from scratch. They have things to start from. Um, collaborate with makers. It's not easy, but it's possible, and we're here. We have a goal, and this is something where maybe some of you guys can help us. Uh, we have a goal to make this more official. Can I ask a question? So how many of you guys are OTs? Okay. Um, and how many, any, any PTs? Okay. Any ATPs that aren't OTs? Okay. What do you mean by that? Are you a speech path that also has an ATP? No, okay. I'm a blind mobility teacher, but probably ATP. Okay, fair, fair enough. So the big thing I've asked about OT specifically, and ATPs as well, is that in none of that training, is there ever anything about how to collaborate with an engineer? Yeah. And in the engineering program, there is nothing about designing for people with non-standard bodies, okay? <laughs> There's one class I have heard of at BCU that teaches it, uh, Virginia, uh, Virginia Commonwealth yeah. University. And at Georgia Tech, there's the Inclusive Design Lab that has some of this. There's two spots. Everybody else doesn't know how to collaborate at all. We want to fix that. So, yeah, right? Yeah. So, this process works. We've done it repeatedly. It needs to be taught, okay? So, your OTs will look at this and say this is not all new. I, I know this is not all new. I stole it from some OT stuff. Um, step, step one is inventory. Inventory, what the person wants to do, what they can do. There's kind of an extra step here called measure, because a, a lot of the assessments that OT use talk about they have this motion or that motion or, or this ability, but it's not in numbers. And at some point when you talk to the engineers, you're going to have to talk numbers. So we actually try to measure, yes, they can move their head left and right, how many degrees? Yes, you can move your, your finger. How much force do you need? How much can you activate? Like Chris today, Ask me about a switch I have. I don't have it in front of me. Because it looked like it would fit where his other hand couldn't use one more switch. And we moved it there, and it's not going to work. You, know, you can't press that switch. Right? We'll find another one. We'll find another one, right? But it would be good to know how many. How many grams of force can he support there? Because then I could buy one, right? Process and activate are not in this room's realm unless you're one of the strange hybrids, right? Like Chris. So, <laughs> Process and activate is, I, Chris, for example, is a great example of this. He has three switches, right? He showed the, the three, I don't know, he showed, showed the thumb, you know, he could be happy to. He's got three switches he can hit with his thumb. But he can hit two of them at a time, and he can hit all three of them at a time. So he has six activation points. He's got left, middle, right, left and middle, middle and right, and all three. That's six different activation points, but press, only. Press, long press. Short press. Long press and short press of all of those. Yeah. So that's 12. Yeah. Right. So, um, but that's processing. That's looking at things like over time, how long did he hold it down? This is really easy programming, but it's programming. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be in the settings on the switch control. It isn't going to be cording. It should be. The ability to cord two switches should be in both iOS and Android switch control. Yeah. But it's not. So some processing needs to be done to clean this up. Another big one is called um, differential activation. It means that rather than looking for how deep that, um, that graph went when Ella could move her cheek, it's how steep the drop is, right? How fast is it changing? And that's what you trigger on. That's another point of processing that we go through. Um, it, lets you, it lets you be slightly further today than you were yesterday and still have the activation work. One of the things we had to do is, you know, you put her finger on the switch. Every time she puts her finger there, it's going to rest with a different amount of force. So we have to self-calibrate. We take a, a rolling average of what her pressure is, and then we detect a change from that average. Right. So you can't just say when she presses with so much force, that's when you trigger her. You say, what took her normal for that day? And then what, is, what happens when she changes? Right. And that's what you have to detect. Another really great example of that is this thing, right? So this thing, the, the old Chris's joystick, every day he's positioned a little differently in the chair, right? And so you've got this collar here that lets you move it up and down, and this thing which lets you slide it left and right. So every day it can be positioned a little bit different, right? Yeah. 
So we do a lot of things like that because we know, and, and it's also where you guys know, like especially the OTs, know more than we do. Chris knows Chris, right? And we know Ella because we've worked with Ella for years. But coming in cold, you know, what might what is going to change day over day is going to be something that, that you're going to bring a lot into. But being able to, to put that process into the system, you're going to need a programmer. And the activation, again, is a done deal. It says, it says anything is controllable with a PC, internet, or Bluetooth. It really is true. And it's not an AT statement. There's a thing called if this, then that. You ever, ever heard of this? It's this site online. You can go and say, when I text a message to this address, I want you to open my garage door because the garage door is on the internet and the text message is on the internet and if this then that is just glue. And you can say things that you would never expect to be able to do and, and link them together. There's all kinds of things like that that people use just because they're freaking lazy, right? <laughs> and other, other things that aren't AT, like um, one of the big uses for the power garage doors, how many have bought a garage door in the past five years? Okay, and it has that my Q thing on it, right? It will go on the internet and let you do it. Which doesn't sound like, why would I want my garage door on the internet? But it's so huge for people who have caregivers because they don't have to give away their front door keys anymore. Right? The person calls and they can open the garage door and they only leave the door from the garage to the kitchen unlocked. And they can let people in without a door, without a physical door opener. They have a garage door, right? Put that on the internet. All of a sudden, it's infinitely doable, okay? Um, we are working with several academic institution, yeah, institutions. If you want to, we you use your help? If you have case studies, research projects that you want to do, if you want to collaborate with one of these organizations, if you know people at IU, if you know people who are in the OT program where you're teaching or where you're going, that want to add this to your, to your practice, tell us. We are looking for other organizations, specifically on the clinician side. Like, there's a lot of engineering schools that want to add this. It's a big, there's a little bit of a push now for inclusivity and, uh, of, of accessible technology. Um, there's not a lot of understanding of how powerful it is to bring engineers in. It is difficult to bring engineers in. Um, I have a wife in the back who will tell you. <laughs> we kind of suck. Our social skills aren't great. We don't finish the projects that we start. We suck at support. Um, like there's all kinds of issues here, right? Um, right, dear? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, sh you should tell them the dice rolling story. Oh, okay. So while we're here, we have time. We have time for this. So, so where are we? Oh, we're good. So we had a dice. We had a request for a dice roller. Okay, so there's an adapted toy. They wanted to be able to roll dice. Um, and they want to be able to roll regular dice or D&D gaming dice, okay? So we had a, a discussion on the board where we talked about who's gonna make this. And uh, Brady Fulton and John Jordan and I don't even remember who else. It's like four other people talked about making one. And they were debating what the best way to make this thing is, right? And I'm like, well, why don't y'all just make them? Make, let's see which ones work. So three of them worked. Right? And they're all talking about mine's better and this one's better and the other one. And I said, did any of you ship them to Maryland? Does the person who asked for this have this yet? We've been working on it for six weeks and you're all really proud. But the person who wanted to be able to roll the dice, you have hands. Like, you can roll dice. Send it and find out which one. And I could have killed them. Right? I could have killed all of them. Uh, and that's not necessarily rare. Okay? Now, there's a normally a slide in here. Um, there's normally a slide in here about where it goes wrong. Okay, and I took it out and didn't have enough time. Yeah. It goes wrong on a couple areas. It goes wrong on uh, follow up. It's one of those areas where having a clinician there is going to help. Like I have found recently, thank you. Um, I have found recently that some of the people that I have made devices for including Christine Kramler, Kylie Kramler, aren't using their devices anymore. And I'm like, why did they No, they changed their Wi-Fi password. And now it doesn't work. And the thing is, they don't want to ask for more help. Right? Right? And it's just breaking my heart. It's absolutely killing me. Because I'm like, 
First, I'm an idiot for not making it an easy way for you to change your Wi-Fi password on the device. Second, I drive past your house all the time. Like, freaking ask for help. Okay, we will come and we will fix it and we will make it better. But also, we need to be following up more. We're not good at it. Um, once a problem is solved, man, engineers will run away to the next one instantly. Um, and that is a real problem. Another one is liability. It, it, it is one that we worry about all the time. Um, everybody's worried about the gun. I, I promise you the gun is the least dangerous thing I've ever made. <laughs> so, so the, the most dangerous thing that I have made is a switch. And I know that seems silly, but we, we gave away switches with toys. Right? So we'd give away an adapted toy and we would include a switch. There are these little teardrop switches. And when you're using them with the toy we gave you, it is not dangerous at all because it's a freaking toy, okay? But that AT switch can be plugged into your power chair and stick on and we don't make switches anymore <laughs> because i don't know how to make people say this is a toy at switch not a power chair at switch and there's no way to enforce that so we're getting labeling for some things we will do yeah but we also have, have just found that um, there are certain areas where we say no and it's hard to say no and somebody what was when they asked me it was like some ridiculous ridiculously dangerous thing um, recently like like their vent or something. It was on a feeding tube or, it was like, no. It was like, <laughs> turn, off the, turn on their uh, feeding pump. They want to turn on and off their feeding pump. Well, no, I'm, that's modifying a medical device. That, that puts me in jail. Okay. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. Um, so there are liability concerns. Um, we don't, there are some that we haven't figured out yet. Um, but, that's a work, work in progress. It is a work in progress. And we'd like your advice on that too, because the truth is, you guys make devices, OTs make devices for their students, and they can fail, right? You have, you have professional liability insurance on that. We have that's, to figure out. That, that crimp device that my friend Christopher used. Yeah. Um, that's all right, he's typing our word process. That's okay. <coughs> the internet came along. You know, he's, he's his dad had a heart thing. His mother was type diabetic. If his dad has a heart attack, his mom, mom goes in diabetic coma, and he has to email somebody for help, and my advice fails at that moment, then am I liable? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We had this, he and I had this conversation because I realized that he was using a device that he and I had made together to trigger an emergency alert. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> okay, wait. And it's his, he made it, it we're good. Okay? But we can't sell that, right? And, and so there, there definitely is gray areas there where we have to get around it. But for, for communication, like for communication devices, for switch access, or typing and, and, and moving a mouse, gaming. gaming, right? For all of these things where it's so critical in today's world to be connected and to have the communication tools. Yeah, we can totally do that, right? And we can we can make sure that we are properly that they are properly warned about what we do and don't support, and uh, we can make sure that we stay clear of the very dangerous stuff. But we can do that. So, um, so the next thing on here is how to contact us, and uh, I don't think I am. Oh, wait, no, go back. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna leave it up. So, um, join the faith the AT Makers Facebook group, please. Um, there's 4,300 people there. About half of them are AT users or professionals, um, AT professionals. And then the other half are engineers or robotics kids and people who want to help. Um, and we'd love, to, we'd love to hear from you. So, any questions? Do you have, the, do you have a website where your, makers your, your 3D file recipes are there? So all the 3D, yes. Yeah, so, so, we store our stuff in repositories that are standard for what they are. So we have a Thingiverse page that has all of our designs for the 3D, 3D printed files. We have a GitHub page which has all of our software. It's also where we keep all of the boards that we've designed. Um, we have guides in Adafruit Learning and in Makers Making Change on how to make all of these things. And we need to do a better job of documenting some of them. Some of them are great. Is, is, is this, the guide for the ultimate remote, you can make one. You can totally make one from it from that instruction, uh, whereas other ones are, are less good. Um, but 
the other nice thing is that in all cases, you can go there and get the list of things you need. You can buy them. And then on the AT Makers Facebook group or by email at atmakers.org, we will put you in, in touch with somebody who can help. There's no shortage of helpers here. Uh, there really is. And, and in fact, you should look locally at your robotics team. They want outreach programs. And we're, there's a one other thing I don't have a link to, but I'll show you on here. If you go to YouTube and type in AT Makers Engage. If you type in AT Makers Engage, there is a video called How to Engage Your High School. I love mushrooms. I love it. Okay. What's the, what's the YouTube, I'm sorry? It's a, a, a makers, that's us, okay. engage, okay? And it is how to engage your high, your high school or STEM robotics team to support AT. It's a video I did, I, I walked through this training in New Hampshire, it's half an hour training, I think on here, I think it took me like 33 minutes or something. But um, it talks through everything you need to know before you talk to your robotics team, like what not to say. <laughs> so I made all these mistakes. Lori was there. I made a, a presentation where I got up in front of the announce, the announcement of the game, the robotics game. A friend of mine, my old boss, happened to be the head of the, the program. He let me talk, and I was talking about AT Makers, and I said, robotics is great, and you learn all kinds of important skills, but it's not real. No. I followed it up with, you know, you can actually impact somebody's life, and it was like, all the all the adults in the room of who were not coaches. We're all, yeah, I want my kids involved in that. And the coaches were like, get him off the stage, right? <laughs> Don't say it's not real. Start with, we can help you win the Chairman's Award, <laughs> okay? So the Chairman's Award is the highest award in FRC for your outreach program, right? The, the Inspire Award is the highest outreach program in the FTC program, right? You should know the difference. You should know before you get there that that's what they're eyeing and that's what you can help them with, right? And the, how can you? How can we do that? Well, together we're going to make this, you know, an adaptation for this mouse over here. Cool. And you'll let us take pictures? Yes. Because you have to get the you, biggest thing with robotics kids. You got to get the waiver. You've got to get the ability to let them use the pictures because they're going to take. You can tell me you have to blur the children, right? But they've got to be able to document this and prove that they did it or it didn't happen whole generation of people who doesn't think people things happen unless it's on video. Okay. Um, you've got to get that sign and all of that's in that video. So if you're doing robotics, watch that. Okay. Any questions? No. Is today's video, I mean you were taping this, is this going to be posted where we can so see it? We, yeah, so we got a video over there and I also recorded everything that's on my screen. So in theory, I will be giving both of these raw files to Chris, who will edit together something, uh, and I worry a little bit about the audio. Yeah. If we have to, we can overdub some parts of this. Yeah. Um, I, I think I might have cursed once, but it was a quote, and I'm standing by it. Um, but we might leave that. So yeah, so there will probably be a delay before it's available, but we'll try to get a video of this. Okay. Do you think sending this to your robotics team might be the shortcut? Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, is there anybody who has thoughts about things they need right now? Matt, right. Matt, right. I was just going to ask if the slides would be available. Yeah, so I've already given them to them. The problem was, because I included the three videos, it was freaking enormous. Okay. And so it's 256 meg, and they don't know what to do with it. So I'm going to give them a version that doesn't have the videos in it. Um, but. Uh, I, that's going to take out the the Ella story. We have a great seven minute video on what we just did for Ella on the YouTube channel. Okay. Look on a AT Makers on YouTube, okay. and so that's there. Um, and that worked out well. Yeah, yeah that was, right. it was one of the best two days ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the worst week before that, but um, you know, it, it was it was nice to be able to do something that quickly. Nice. Anything else? Anything for Chris? You want to come up and see all his stuff? So right. don't run over Chris, but but he, the the Ultimate remote is worth seeing. Um, we have another one over in the booth, and I don't mind staying late. It's right here. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, do you want to see this one? I have it turned on. Yeah, it's turned on. So if you want to see how that works, I can walk you through it up here um, without having to mess with his. Yeah. That's, 
We're not gonna break that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anything? We're good? Thanks. Yeah, thank